Hey fellow content creators, your boy Kahiso M with another video. Today we're going to talk audio. Looks like this day we're talking too much or a lot about audio. And simply because audio can make or break your video. Especially if you're doing a video for a client, you have to take audio very, very seriously. So, <clears throat> specifically I'm going to talk about the Boya Blimp or the wind absorber shock absorber whichever name we use it doesn't really matter this is the uh, byws 1000 i haven't seen another blimp for boya um so i guess this might be the only one um and if there's someone who knows any other boya blimp uh, maybe you can put it <clears throat> sorry on the comment section at the bottom so before we get into the nitty-gritty of this blimp, um, I just want to, especially to the newcomers, um, the new guys starting, um, I started there. We used to take um, the camera, go shoot the wedding, go shoot an event, and the only thing that we will be having will be the internal audio on the camera itself. And there was not really, <clears throat> sorry, there was not really like um, a mic that will be very close to the source so that we can capture good quality audio. But as things goes, um, we understood that audio is very, very critical. So the closer you have it to your source, the better. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not sure what's happening. <clears throat> My voice is not legger. So anyway, so for you to capture a good quality audio, um, especially when we are on set. Um, there's just few guidelines that you can follow. I might miss something, uh, but most importantly, get your um, microphone as close as possible to your source. And the easier one might be to have a lapel mic, like the one that I'm having now, I'm recording today, <coughs> sorry, the lapel mic. By doing this, you might not have to have a, a long cable going to your camera or going to your audio recorder. So get it as close as possible. So even if you are having a suspension system like this or a blimp, um, try to see if you can use a, a boom and then get it as close as possible. If you don't have a boom, um, you might find somebody else who can hold it for you as close as possible. Of course, it should be out of the frame. So <clears throat> secondly, uh, make sure that you isolate your microphone from the external sources, um, especially noise. And noise can be anything else like people chatting, cars passing. Um, so try to get a room that is noise free as possible. Um, it might not be simple or easy, especially when you are on location or a deadline set. So the other thing is still talking about the noise um, is the wind. So if you're outdoor, um, you might get wind. Sometimes you don't hear the wind, uh, but you might find there's just a gentle breeze that is actually hitting your mic and can cause, <clears throat> so it can cause a bad noise. So wind is the enemy, <laughs> a very big enemy. Um, the other thing is um, try to get a recorder um, that is of a good quality and also a good quality mic because sometimes it doesn't help to have a good quality um, mic but you have a bad quality preamps. So either the preamps on, on your camera or the preamps on your recorder. So if you follow these three, you, you should be close to getting there. Um, maybe the fourth one, which sometimes we tend to forget about it, it's actually the shock. And the shock can be something like just hitting your mic. You know, the shock that goes into the mic if um, it touches something. Or it can also be if you're having a boom and your cable or even your hands, you're moving your hands, um, you can actually, you might even send, you know, the shock waves um, to your microphone. And talking about touching your microphone, um, the other thing is the noise that can be generated uh, from your hands or even from uh, your cable. So you must make sure that you 
tie your cable in a way that they will not send noise. So I think we're good about that. Um, for the people who came specifically, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. So I didn't lock it. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it. Um, no, anyway. I am on the lapel mic so I can stand up. Sometimes I just use, I have a long cable, so sometimes I use that. This is the Boya Blimp. This is the Boya Blimp. This is your, what is it, BYWS1000. And like I said, I, I don't know if there's any other Boya Blimp. I only know this one. So what the Blimp does, or oh, let me start by saying, um, the Blimp came with, your dead cat is that's what i can call it it's your fair which will help you with the wind and when it's new these fairs do tend to come off so i think dusting it now and then grooming it uh, will help you to get rid of um, the loose fair um, not much of them are coming out so it's not a train smash and inside it has a nice cloth here um, of course your sound will be able to penetrate this but a lot of wind will be sort of discarded and then you have the shell itself maybe there's a technical name for this but you have the shell and it can be opened from both the front and the back um, with boya on both sides they made sure this is branded um, so also the shell and the covers, they also do have some material um, that is porous. So making sure that it actually stop um, more wind or more noise. So let's just do this. I'm just going to unhook this and slide it out. So if you are indoor, like I'm doing my podcast, you can actually just use the suspension system like this. So this is the suspension system with the handle. Um, these are more like rubber stuff. So all they do, they, they do their best to isolate the microphone from the shock that I was talking about um, earlier. And also your cable, there is a rubber here where you can just put the, your cable that goes onto the mic, which is an XLR cable, hold it so that it don't be moving, it don't be sending um, noise onto your microphone. Um, my microphone is quite long. I'm not sure what is this distance. Probably a little less than a 30 centimeter uh, ruler. So this might come close to about 270, 280. Um, this can take quite a long microphone. Um, you should be able to, let me see, because I said mine is about 270, so uh, probably 300 to about 350 uh, millimeter of microphone might go in there, uh, considering that you also have the two caps. So, there is a cable. There is a cable, XLR cable, um, that comes with the mic so that comes with um, the suspension system or the whole uh, blimp set so it is it has been made that it doesn't really move much inside the handle and once you hook it on here you won't be having an issue in terms of it making noise um, you can also um, you are able to also adjust the position of your mic if it's long so that um, it doesn't hit the front of the capsule um, or the back of the capsule and like i said it has been nicely isolated uh, with this reddish rubbers um, the handle itself it's quite nice it's actually quite comfortable it has a nice rubber um, with some rough grip and it is also both sides, it has a Boya logo or Boya wedding. Um, you do have 
you do have a very robust hinge here. And once it is locked, um, this is locked. Uh, it's actually quite robust. You shouldn't be have an issue. Um, I would say that the material that has been used on this thing is quite robust. It's a mixture of plastic and metal, and I like it. Um, I can just take my shotgun mic out of here. And even the plastic that are actually holding the shotgun mic, they are also quite robust. I don't think I will have a problem with them breaking. Um, with the package, I did get extra um, this rubbers, the rubber band um, that actually takes, that, that absorbs the shock. Um, there's a couple of them. I think there is about maybe four more. Um, I'm not 100% sure about the quantity, but should be difficult to lose them because I'm not taking them off by any means. Now, I'm just going to put it back, which is quite simple. It just slides um, on this without any hassles. And once it slides in, um, can just fasten this. So, the last thing that the boya comes with is a bag. I don't know about the quality of this bag. I don't know if it will last. Um, it's just like a regular softbox bag type. So, if you're not abusing it, it should be fine. I don't know. I don't want to fault it. I don't want to talk much about it. It's just a bag where you put all these things. So, when you are on set, um, why would you need a blimp like this? First, maybe let me just talk about the pricing. In general, I don't know much about the blimps that are out there. The only one that I know about that is famous with filmmakers is the road, and it has been said that it has good quality. But I don't know about good quality, what does it mean, and I don't know the comparison between it and the boya. But what I can say is, with this guy, you are about to save almost half um, the price of the road. So myself, I am happy about this because I don't know what else the road is actually providing that I won't be getting from this. So we got that out. So why will you need this Boya Blimp? First, it has a nice fan that is going to help you with the wind when you are outside. When you are indoor, you don't really need this. You can take it out. It's, it's, it's not really a must. So, and it is going to sort of cut your your voice in a way because it dampens it from this fair. From the inside, it also has a nice cloth that will also help you with um, wind isolation. That is the main thing of this blimp, to try by all means to cut the wind. And secondly, like I showed you, this is actually a suspension. So it has a good suspension that will definitely help you um, to cut the shock that goes into the mic, uh, therefore reducing your noise, and you'll be able to have a good quality uh, sound. And then the third thing, um, it has these XLR connectors that you're going to put on the mic, and you're going to have to add your longer one on here, you know, without the really, once you set this, you don't have to really fiddle with um, the cable inside. I'm making noise with these cables. Another thing, at the bottom, at the bottom where the handle is, this is where you are going to um, fasten it to your boom, uh, definitely your boom, or any other handling mechanism. So it uses um, your normal standard tripod size threads, which I think is your quarter inch and your three eighth inch, you know, the small one and the big one. So it 
comes with an adapter, which is, so the handle uses, I think is the 3 8 um, uh, which is the bigger one. And it comes with the adapter that is going to reduce it to a normal small tripod size thread or camera um, thread size. So all in all, um, this is affordable. This works. We actually used it on, 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 on our sets. And this looks durable. And I'm looking to use this more often on set. So this is your boy Gariso M. If you think you got one or two good tips, um, please do the right thing. You know what I mean? I like this video. You can share the video. And if you feel like um, you might be able to gain something from my channel, uh, please consider subscribing. Your boy Gariso M and I'm out of here.